Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the Answer Series Life Sciences videos based on our study guides. If you don't have our Grade 12 Life Sciences books, Parts 1 and 2, you'll still be able to follow these lessons. This video focuses on Darwin's theory. It's the second evolutionary theory we study. Charles Darwin's theory is also known as Darwinism and this is the second of three different theories of development that we'll be looking at. Scientists made three main observations when studying the natural environment. They observed enormous biodiversity of all living organisms, huge variety, the adaptations of organisms to their particular environment, and the continuous changes that occur in each environment. We covered Lamarck and his theories in the previous video. We'll focus on Charles Darwin and his theory of natural selection and evolution including gradualism in this video, the more recent theory of punctuated equilibrium by Gould and Aldridge will follow in the next video. A quick overview of Darwin and Darwinism. Darwin wrote a book called On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. He traveled around the world in a boat called the HMS Beagle and studied living organisms on many continents, including birds, the finches on the Galapagos Islands. Darwin observed that populations always produce many offspring, more than will survive. There was always variation in the populations. Most variation is caused by random mutations. There are changes in the environment, for example, increase in predation, or lack of food, or disease, or lack of shelter, or shortage of mates, these changes lead to a struggle for survival. Those individuals with favorable characteristics have an advantage. Individuals with unfavorable characteristics are at a disadvantage. Best adapted individuals survive, and this is known as survival of the fittest. Individuals who do not adapt die out and may become extinct. Darwin explained evolution in terms of this mechanism called natural selection, where the environment determines which individuals are better adapted and which are not. Populations change over time and may eventually become so different that they form a new species, speciation. Darwin's trips in the HMS Beagle around the world resulted in the development of his theory of evolution described in his book On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. The Galapagos Islands off the coast of South America were rich in diversity in plants and animals and Darwin used the expression descent with modification to describe his idea of biological evolution. He believed that all organisms are related through common descent from one common ancestor. In other words, the idea of all organisms descending from one ancestor and forming one tree of life. Darwin's theory of evolution is based on four observations. Number one, there is always more offspring than will survive. There's variation in a population. Variation is caused by random mutations. Some individuals are better adapted than others, whether it is camouflage or strength or size or attractive coloring to attract mates or, or thick shells in muscles to avoid being eaten by starfish. These better adapted individuals will survive in their specific habitat and they have a better chance of reproducing. Their favorable characteristics are then transferred to their offspring. So if this particular pattern here is favorable for survival in this environment, then it will survive and pass on this gene to their offspring. These observations led Darwin to proposing a mechanism of evolution known as natural selection. This is an important slide because it summarizes Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection you'll notice that there is a lot of repetition in this video. So there is a large number of offspring, more than will survive. There is variation in the offspring. If individuals have a favorable characteristic, this will give them an advantage in their particular environment. For example, they may be well camouflaged from predators 
or they may be able to impress a mate or they may be bigger to find food. If there's a change in the environment, there will be increased competition and those that are better adapted will survive. Individuals with unfavorable characteristics that disadvantage them in a particular environment, like they are not well camouflaged, or they're too slow to catch food, or they're too light in windy conditions, or too big to hide from predators. They are less fit and they will not survive. They will decrease in the population. The better adapted survive. They reproduce and they pass on the gene for their favorable characteristic to their offspring. The better adapted will thus become more frequent in the population. The population will change over time and eventually lead to the formation of a new species and speciation. Natural selection is where the environment determines which organisms are better adapted and which are not. So another quick summary of evolution by natural selection. There's a large number of offspring. There's variation in the population. There's a struggle for survival. And this may be due to a lack of food or a lack of mates or a lack of shelter or light or space or water, etc. These are all known as selection pressures. And these selection pressures put pressure on the population and result in natural selection and survival of the fittest or extinction of the less fit. Favorable characteristics are inherited. Populations change over time and there may be speciation where new species are formed. These small, slow changes in species over time is known as gradualism, where species slowly become more and more different until they form new species. This is a slow form of speciation. If we look at an application of Darwin's theory, we'll use the same example as Lamarck's theory, the origin of long-necked giraffes. Where did they come from? Darwin suggested that a large number of offspring are produced, more than will survive. There is variation in the population, whether it's structure or function. In this case, the variation is in the length of necks of giraffes. There are long and short-necked individuals in the population, in the ancestors' population. Note most variation in the population is due to random mutations. If there was a change in the environment, there will be a struggle for survival and increased competition, in this case, for food. Individuals with favorable traits, like long-necked giraffes, have an advantage. They can reach the leaves higher up. These best adapted individuals or giraffes survive, they reproduce and they pass on their genes to their offspring. The less fit giraffes with the shorter necks die out and eventually become extinct. So less fit short necked giraffes decrease in the population. But better adapted individuals with favorable traits remain in the population and increase in frequency. The population changes over time and eventually we may get new species forming. Darwin's explanation for the flightless birds and the webbed feet of ducks will differ from Lamarck's explanations. Darwin believed there's variation in the original population and natural selection determines which are better adapted to their environment. For example, penguins may have a random mutation for small useless wings. Natural selection may select these individuals as they are better adapted for their environment, for faster, deeper diving in water. Natural selection may also select a snake that has a random mutation for reduced or no legs at all, as it gives an advantage for burrowing on land, according to evolutionary scientists like Darwin. Lamarck and Darwin also have some similarities and we'll talk about them in the last slide. Darwin extended his theory to variation in humans and suggested that some were fitter than others, as seen in the full title of his book, but these were not based on scientific evidence. Another application of Darwin's theory is the origin of webbed feet in ducks. There's variation in the offspring, so there is either more skin between the toes or less skin between the toes. There's a change in the environment, for example, 
lack of food. So there will be a struggle for survival and increased competition for these resources. The web-toed ducks have more skin between their toes, so they have an advantage. It's a favorable trait or characteristic. They are the best adapted, so they survive, they reproduce, and they pass on their genes to their offspring. The less adapted ducks with less skin or no web toes will die out and eventually become extinct. So the favorable trait becomes more frequent in the population. It remains in the population. It's inherited by the offspring. The population changes over time until it becomes so different that it cannot interbreed with the original population and it eventually forms a new species and we know this as speciation. So let's compare Darwin with Lamarck. Trays are inherited via genes. There is variation in the population. Change occurs by random mutations. There is a struggle for existence. There is survival of the fittest. Nature selects the best adapted or the best fit. So natural selection determines the change and favorable variations are inherited. Extinction occurs when less adapted individuals die out. Populations change over time. Darwin and Lamarck also agree in some aspects. Similarities include life develops from simple to complex. Species constantly change and the best adapted individuals survive, like the long-necked giraffes. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.